Hey campers, George here, back in the man cave. Yep, got me a new sharp and shiny from one of my favorite people, Rough Rider. This guy is the Faded Blue Jeans series. Yeah, it's a looker. Let's check it out. So this guy here comes in this pretty cool Rough Rider box. They do have some nice packaging. And this one is the Faded Blue Jeans, the Makata Handle Series. And uh, it, it's got some extras on it, and it really looks pretty cool. This guy, right here, see him? Very nice. This is a well-made knife from Rough Rider. Look at this. Very nice. No gaps, no nothing. It is a solid, solid knife. It's got some weight to it as well. Not only that, this guy has a blade on it that can do just about anything you need for a work EDC. All those working chores, look at this blade. It's huge and it's solid. Very nice. This I like. And, you know, as you can see over here, it has the nickel silver Rough Rider badge, just the plain silver badge. Very nice. You see this here? I love this idea for a work knife. Really old school, but it makes so much sense. And yes, it's a liner lock. You can see it there. Pretty obvious. The RR, of course on the Ricasso there and it does say China and on all their blades you can see there it says 440 stainless steel razor sharp they have that on all their, their blades you know you know me I'm a huge Rough Rider fan the value you get from these guys for the knives they make you just can't beat it you know you have your marbles your roper knives all these guys out there, they're making these inexpensive, traditional folding knives. None of these flick open stuff, just old school. And I would have to say Rough Rider, these are the top guys in it. They may, they do a really good job. And I, you know, I've been a fan of theirs for years. I own enough of them that I should have shares in Rough Rider. You know what? I'll settle for just owning their knives and look at this handle. Now, I got to say, you know, they've done a good job on the handle. I've seen the, the uh, Makata Jean series. This is a little different. They call it the faded denim or faded jean uh, series. And I, it's a Makata handle and it's really well made. And just the color, the colors they chose for this knife are really nice. Let's have a little closer look at some specs on this thing. So starting off, like I said, it's a liner lock and you can see it there. It's a very, very clean knife. Just, you know, it has the Makata handle on it. Yeah? A really nice touch here is they have these orange underliners here, which just Gives it a little bit more sharper look. It really brings out the denim Makada. It really looks nice. And like all Rough Riders, you have your nickel silver pins, the badge and across there. And then up here, you have your really nice big solid pivot point there. You can see it. This, I got to say for a work knife, and, and you know me, I'm a sod buster fan. And Rough Rider have made some nice ones. Now, this is a little bit big, bigger for me than normal. You can see how it sits compared. Don't worry about the, the cuts and nicks and everything in my hand. I'm a working class person. <laughs> so here you can see how, how big it is, the handle. And so that means closed. I'm going to say... It's a touch over four and a half inches, the handle. So it's a bigger. It's not small. Then you have, like I said, the blade. Look at this blade. Very, very nice blade. It is 
and you know you can see uh, with a four for a four inch handle you know you're going to have a nice size blade and i'm looking here and you're looking at interestingly enough <laughs> you know me in this measurement from the tip to the ricasso is three and a half inches and they actually say that in their spec so it's the working edge and of course you have your nail neck on it you can see it right there and it has the mat strike old school mat strike people used to strike their matches on it and it does have of course your false blade this point here you can see it there i'll show you on the side here you can see it right there the false blade from oh, about halfway up the blade and you know I, I call it a false blade because it, although it comes to an edge it's not sharp and uh, I think the te the technical term obviously is a swedge and it's pretty common on a lot of knives that they want to be able to bring the tip to a sharp point now everything I like on this knife except the tip it's and it surprises me it's it's a little dull that could be a little bit sharper, kind of disappointing. Um, they could have brought it to a nice sharper tip. Yeah, you know, it's going to be sharp. Um, it's been really humid lately and really having a problem. All my paper is kind of damp. It's been so humid. Here we are complaining about the heat after going through winter. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm never happy. Anyway, you could see it sliced through there, no problem. Now, like I said, 440 stainless steel. If you look at the, the edge on this, it's not too bad. It gets a little thin right here where that belly goes up. So this is, I'm going to say, a drop point blade because it does drop off nicely. And, you know, it's a monster blade. Now, I did say it's a liner lock. And... You know, when you look here, you can see it's a solid lock. Look at that dead center on the blade. Very nicely done. And they have this big thing here, and I, which is part of the liner, the liner lock. And I always wondered what it was for. Well, this is a working knife. You know, the cowboys and working class artisans out there, especially in today's safety requirements on the job you're required to wear gloves if you're handling sharp stuff or you, there's anything like that you're required to wear, wear gloves and it's typically it's a leather glove they never fit perfectly they're always a bit off on the, the the fingers and things like that having this huge piece here to release it when you have you know your your glove on it's no problem with that. It's such a good idea. You know, I carry at work all the time and I carry smaller ones. I have to take my glove off to release a liner on them. I struggle with my gloves on. With this, no problem. And it is a big, hefty knife. As you can see, that blade, it's a beast. Look at that. And I'll show you how you can see it's got some real thickness there. And of course, the swedge makes it look thinner, but it's just going down if you look at the edge. Very nice. I can't get away from them. I, I sp At least once a week, I'll go and surf around and see if they've come out with something new. I hadn't seen this one before. And so when I came across it, yeah, it's a sod buster. There you go. Sold. <laughs> I, I love a sod buster. I don't think you can beat a sod buster knife for an EDC at work. They really handy to have. You can just cut about anything with it. I've been cutting up boxes actually, and you know this will slice through cardboard. You'll be surprised how difficult it is to cut cardboard. And having a blade like this is really handy. Uh, wood. I'm, not, I'm going to use my indoor knife testing system. Are you ready? See if you can catch this. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. It's pulling out some big chunks here. And it's going through them, no problem. Look at that. I'll have to get Mary to get the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yeah, right. It'll do just about anything you, you need in a workplace. 
I'm not an abusive knife owner. Even at work, I never use my knives to pry or anything like that. Even how how much these things cost, I I can't bring myself to abuse them. It's just me. And, you know, I, I see a lot of comments of guys saying, well, you know, that blade's a little thin for prying. Mm, I don't know. I have tools to do that. So, just saying. This is a very nice knife. I, I'm impressed. One, one of their better, bigger knives. I've struggled with a lot of their bigger knives because I'm not a big knife guy. But this, I do like. And of course, this uh, faded, you know, jean, blue jean, is, it's, it looks nice. You know, it's a Mikado handle, sure. And then they put those underliners on, really made a difference. You can see how clean it is. There's no gaps anywhere. They did a great job. How much did I pay for it? You're not going to believe this, but yeah that much i don't know about you this is an awful lot of knife for that kind of money but i'm not surprised that's the way rough rider rolls some of their newer stuff is getting a little pricey but i think you know the materials that they're using the styles and that you know it costs them more and i understand that but they haven't gone away from this the price is right and of course, you know, you can you can always see a rough rider. This is it's a great knife. It's a looker. I have to say, it's a it's a it's a really nice looking knife. So not only is it a solid work knife, it'll make you look good on the job. <laughs> what can I say? Don't forget, like, share subscribe you know the story pretty sure i'll be back again i'm you know i've looked at all the new knives and everything and these flippers and front flippers the regular flippers ball bearings on them and all this good stuff they're nice but i doubt you can take them to work and abuse it like you could this knife. now i use the word abuse loosely i mean it's going to get dirty there's you know, oil, grease, dirt, and it gets in the knives. And it really, it makes me nervous thinking that they're going to have all those little ball bearings and stuff in the knives. And I'm like, oh, I think I'll stick to your regular nail neck folder. I mean, what can I say? It's a nice knife. So I'm sure I'll be looking at... Uh, a lot more of the traditional stuff. I'll, I'm going to go back and have a look at Rough Ride again, see what they got new out there. Um, you know, the only thing is with the, the new styles and that. They're very nice. You know, they're kind of new tradition, but they're a little pricey for me. So what do you do when you're on a budget? You all be safe out there, especially with a monster like this. Looks are deceiving. <laughs> Just saying. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.